Hey there, fans of retro technology, and welcome to another retro revival video about the Amiga 500, a computer that left an indelible mark of the world of personal computing. As soon as I see that bouncing ball demo, I am taken back to a time when computers were just starting to become a part of our daily lives. As you might have noticed, this Amiga 500 is painted gold. I have done this because the case felt a retro brighting project. I kind of like it like this. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Amiga 500 featured a Motorola 68000 CPU, running at around 7 MHz and had 512 KB of RAM, which was expandable to 1 MB, and it could be plugged in on the side of the motherboard into a special port. Amiga OS is the operating system used on Amiga computers. It consists of the Kickstart firmware and Workbench graphical user interface, providing a desktop environment and tools for managing files and applications. My Amiga uses version 1.3 of the OS. To save costs of floppy disks, you could also connect a 5.25 inch floppy drive to the Amiga. It worked in the same way as the 3.5 inch drive, with the exception that you were not able to boot from that drive. However, it was possible to install a boot drive selector. This Amiga does not have one yet. As for every retro machine, there are many possibilities for modding that can be added to the Amiga 500 to enhance its capabilities and bring it up to modern standards. For example, adding an HDMI output and the installation of an accelerator chip. In this machine, I have replaced the floppy drive with a so-called GoTech floppy emulator. It allows storing disk images on a USB drive. This version of the drive has only a digit number display, but it's possible to add a screen that can show the name of the disk you are loading. My GoTech drive uses the Cortex firmware. It allows you to boot into a menu and assign disk image files to numbers. After you are done, you can simply save and reboot the computer. Then you can select the image to load by selecting the correct number using these two buttons. Instead of the standard tank Amiga mouse, I am using this Zydeck mouse. It has an ergonomic design and two buttons. On the bottom of the mouse there is a switch that allows you to switch for compatibility with the Atari ST. I also have this arcade joystick that uses Commodore colors. Let's put it to use and load up some games. Thank you for watching this short video about the Amiga 500 computer. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to help me out with this YouTube channel, please like this video and subscribe. Until next time, happy retro gaming!